Hi there, my name is Charles Suarez from MCPA. Welcome to another presentation on, complex, on functions of complex variables. In this case, we're going to discuss, uh, I'm going to, we're going to explain the concepts of uh, singularity, zeros, and residues. Now, starting with singularities, A singularity of a com uh, complex function f of z is uh, a point z equals to z0 on the complex plane where f of z fails to be analytic. Uh, this happens normally where f of z is uh, undefined or is uh, infinity. Sometimes it also happens where the function does not assume a single value now is there's an option of taking different values for example f number one here f of z we've got uh, z equals to two and the z equals to one being singularities and number two here z equals to zero is a singularity because like here the function is undefined at the, the, the points of singularities and number three f equals to e to the power one over z we give also that uh, z equals to one is uh, the point of singularity now before we go further to classify the points of singularity we also need to explain the concept of a zero of a function. Now, a zero of a function f of z is a point z equals to z zero on the complex plane, such that f of z evaluated at z zero, we get zero. Now, in this example given here, we note that when z is equals to minus one, evaluating this function we get f of minus 1 equal to 0, meaning z equals to z0 equals to minus 1 is a 0 of the given function f of z. Coming back to classification of uh, singularities, Singularities are classified according uh, in te, uh, using the their, seri their Lorentz series expansion. Now, in the case, the principal part of the Lorentz series is finite. In other words, it stops somewhere at m terms. In this case, m terms in the principal part of the Lorentz series, then z equals to z0 is called a pole, and the number m defines what you call the order of the pole. The order of the pole, z0. In the case that uh, m is equals to 1, we call that pole a simple pole. Otherwise, a pole can be repeated like twice, that when m is equals to 2, then we call it a double pole, or otherwise from m greater than 1, we can simply say it's a multiple pole of order M.
Another way of defining a multi, a pole of order M is by using this formula, which says the Z0 is a pole of order M if the limit as Z is approaching Z0 of Z minus Z0 to the power M times F is equal to the coefficient C sub minus M. This is another way of defining a pole of order M. The next what you look at what you call essential singularity. Essential singularity or let's say Z equals to Z0 is essential singularity if the Lorentz series developed around this Z0 has an infinite principal part then this Z0 is called an essential singularity. An essential singularity is also is defined in by means of or by the nature of uh, the Lorentz series. In the case, the principal part of the Lorentz series is infinity. Z equals to Z zero is going to be called an essential singularity. For example, in the case of f of z equals to 1 over z minus 1, this z equals to 1 is an essential singularity. That means that the power series, the Lorentz series of this function would have an infinite principal path. The way we can see this is by using the standard um, expansion of exponential function e to the power z which is equals to 1 plus z plus z squared over 2 factorial plus z cubed over 3 factorial and this continues to infinity. Now applying this here would get 1 plus 1 over z minus 1. I hope you see here that this is the beginning of the principal part of the Lorentz series expansion. And the next term will be 1 over z minus 1 to the power 2 multiplied by 2 factorial plus 1 over z minus 1 to the power 3 multiplied by 3 factorial and this continues in the negative direction to minus infinity. So this being the case z equal to 1 is an essential singularity. On the other hand, we have points, sing, points of singularity we, which disappear when we expand the function in this power series expansion. In other words, the Lorentz series has only the Taylor part and the, the Taylor part does not have singularities. For example, in this function, sine z over z, z equals to zero is a singularity, but developing a Lorentz series expansion of this, using this the Taylor series expansion of uh, sine z and divided by that, we obtain a power series of this form, one minus z squared 
over 3 factorial plus z to the power of 4 over 5 factorial minus and that continues which is precisely a Taylor series and z no longer appears as a singularity such a singularity is will be called a removable removable singularity in other words an essential singularity is a non removable singularity now at this point I would like you to engage with exercises in your text and see and practice develop uh, expanding functions in your Lauren series and then be able to classify singularities as poles, be it repeated poles or simple pole, and also as essential singularity or removable singularity. Now, turning to the definition of residue, a residue is also defined by means of the Lorentz series of a given function f of z. In this case, a residue is the coefficient which accompanies the term z minus z0 to the power minus 1, which is in this case c sub minus 1, is defined as the residue of the function f of z. This is going to be a very important uh, tool in this course. So in our next presentation, we're going to develop ways of computing residues without necessarily being in the presence of a Lorentz series. Otherwise, for now, I hope the concepts of singularities and their classification is clear and it's clear also what a residue is. And in our next presentation, we'll develop the techniques of calculating residues. Otherwise, for now, thank you for listening.